Set in the fictional town of Hawkins, Indiana in 1983, Stranger Things is a love letter to the 80s. It easily captured a generation. In the show's opening episode, a young boy vanishes into thin air. The inhabitants of Hawkins are drawn into an extraordinary mystery as they search for answers. Stranger Things is unlike any other TV show because the show's creators have to face challenges of creating believable monsters that will shock and scare audiences. A lot of the scenes were done using CGI. If you want to know how things looked on set without CGI, you have come to the right place. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. The Demo Goron is one of the most memorable characters in Stranger Things. After all, it's not every day you see a predatory humanoid creature. The monster originated from the parallel world of the Upside Down and entered Hawkins after Eleven made interdimensional contact with it and a gate opened between the dimensions. The creature terrorized Hawkins for a week. How exactly did they make the Demo Goron? The show's creators, the Duffer Brothers, wanted to use as little CGI as possible, so they had a real person wear a not so scary suit during the shooting. The actor portraying the monster, Mark Steger, used his hands to move the monster's arms. His arms had to be covered in green so that it's easier to remove during post production. Fortunately for the show, it wasn't Steger's first project. He'd been involved in huge projects such as I Am Legend, World War Z, and the supernatural TV show American Horror Story, so he knows what he's doing. While explaining the character to him, the Duffner brothers often referred to the classic monster such as John Carpenter's The Thing and the alien from the movie the same name. An additional thing that Steger had taken note of when portraying the Demorgoron was that it had to convey the terror from Jaws. Did the Demorgoron remind you of any monster? How about the Upside Down? How was it created? The mysterious world of the Upside Down was created by marrying digital and practical effects. By combining the two, it enabled them to make the otherworldly look convincing. The visual effects team used digital effects to transform real locations into Upside Down. Sets had to be meticulously scanned and reconstructed in 3D models. The buyer's house also served as the setting for many scenes shot in the Upside Down. It had to be built in such a way that enabled all the walls to be easily removed and allowed the effects team to enhance effects. Whenever Eleven walks into the void of Upside Down, they use a large water tank as an easy, low-cost, and effective solution. Another thing that is unique to Upside Down is the distinctive spores, and most of those were made also using CGI. Real spores didn't work as well as they wanted, and the cast found it difficult to act with the spores flying around and getting in their faces. The Duffer brothers were also afraid that the cast might inhale the spores, and there's no telling what it can do to their health. So they decided to use 90% generated spores. However, the spores not only had to float around, but they also had to interact with the characters. So, the effects team had to draw around the actors and features of the background to give the spores depth and space to move around. The third season had to rely more on post-production compared to the previous two. Although the Duffer brothers wanted to use the practical approach, they later realized it would make more sense to use digital effects. However, this doesn't mean that there were few practical effects used during the shooting. Dealing with child actors means having something that truly inspires and scares them when needed. So how did they convey the mind flare to those who were on set? In the first season, the team made a stand-in 3D printed polywalk. Not only was it an aid for the kids on set, but it was also used as a lighting reference. However, in the third season, a huge monster invaded a shopping mall and there was no way to use 3D printing for that. The special effects found it a challenge. Initially, they resorted to creating a zeppelin-shaped creature shell so they could visualize and puppeteer the monster's head. However, it was heavy and its weight didn't make it very practical. It was also a safety hazard to have something that heavy up in the air, and the last thing anybody wanted was to have a member of the cast or the production team badly injured. So they ended up using a blow-up beach ball taped to the end of a 20-foot pole. This enabled the team to effectively puppeteer the monster's head and provide an eyeline for the actors. It also gave camera operators a great shot at framing and tracking the monster's movement. Post-production then had to add texture and moisture to make the monster seem as real as it can be. The beach ball was also used in the scene where the kids were all hiding behind the counters. How about the scenes at the hospital? The actors involved admitted that the hospital scene wasn't easy to shoot because it involved a lot of running. It also called for a lot of practical effects. The scenes took two days to complete and each day was a grueling 12 to 14 hours of shooting. There is one scene where Charlie had to hit his co-star Michael with a vase and although they were only rubber vases, Charlie was still hurt of afraiding his co-star. Careful as he was, Michael's ear was still turning red after being hit. The monster wasn't as scary in real life though. It actually looked funny during shooting. The assistant stunt coordinator had to wear a red spandex suit and a giant silver ball helmet while doing all the monster motions. He had to roar and break things while wearing this ridiculous suit. It must have taken so much for him not to laugh. The third season's opening in the Russian lab was memorable to say the least. The device that attempted to open the gates to the upside down was described as a cross between a jet engine turbine and a ray gun. The massive machine operating right under the nose of the residents of Hawkins and it was one of the most challenging things the visual effects team had to come up with. In the opening sequence, it was created with a fully CG environment. Even the guys wearing chem suits were CG characters. The Duffer brothers referred to the scene as one of their favorites. Although the show's arts team built the machine, the turbine 
system wasn't functional. The skeletal device placed on the stage only provided the machine's shape if it was fully built. The visual effects team then came in to add the interactive elements that later served as the basis for animation. There was also that time when Will was possessed by the Mind Flayer. How did they make that scene epic? The Duffer Brothers thought it would be a great idea to use tornadoes and storms to convey the atmosphere. On Netflix, you'll see poor Will seemingly get attacked, but on set, things looked very different. When shooting the scene, Will was just making faces as a propeller created the wind and a huge green screen moved around him in circles. There was even a time when parts of Eleven had to be computer generated. In earlier episodes of the second season, Eleven was finally starting to grow her curly hair. However, there was a problem because the episode also needed flashbacks to fill in what had happened before the season began. Viewers needed to see Eleven in her very short hair and didn't make any sense to cut Eleven's hair again. Millie Bobby Brown also didn't want to go through the experience of shaving her hair again. The team experimented with a wig and a bald cap, but it only added a lot of volume to Eleven's hair. So they decided to just go the digital route. They basically just put new hair onto Eleven's head for all the scenes. It turned out quite well as nobody knew the difference. Special effects don't always have to be big to be appreciated. Although one of the show's most memorable scenes was the slimy embodiment of the Mind Flayer, the rats were basically the first incarnation of the monster. A lot of work went into creating exploding rats and moving blood of we don't want to know what. Trained rats were considered for parts of the filming, however, the Duffer Brothers changed changed their minds because one, they needed a lot of rats, and two, rats just can't explode when the Duffers needed them to. Another option they explored was doll rats and remote controlled rats, unfortunately they were dysfunctional. However, they used rat puppets as a reference when they shot the scenes. They were replaced with computer generated rats, and it was done quite well, as all the rodents ended up looking very realistic. Not all was CGI, they also had to use prosthetics for a few things. The show hired special effects company Fractured FX to build prosthetics for Will Byer's fake body as seen in the fourth chapter. They also did the prosthetics for Barbara Holland's corpse, which was featured briefly in chapter 7 and 8. The company also built the large yellow that a monster fed on and was featured prominently in the Upside Down on the 8th chapter. What's your most favorite scene in Stranger Things? Which among the things we mentioned were the most surprising to you? Let us know in the comment section. We'll see you again in the next video. Stay safe.